Well, isn't that a wonderful thought tonight? Now, I belong to Jesus. And nothing would make Alice Combs Beck happier than for that to be the case with each and every one of us. Thank you, Bill and family, for allowing us this privilege to salute a wonderful friend. My friend and yours, a true and loving servant of God who lived out her faith in her daily life. Colossians 3, 16 and 17 tells us that we should let the word of God dwell richly in us with wisdom as we teach and admonish one another in words as we sing to the Lord with grace in our hearts to the Lord. True, true, true of heaven. The Apostle Paul also reminds us that all of our actions and words should exemplify Christ and that we should give thanks to God. For me, this is a real expression and description of our beautiful Alice Speck. It is her life story. I was asked if I would share just uh, shortly and briefly, and I've tried to do that, my connection with the Cones. Um, I never met Alice in the early days. It was just a few years ago, like 1960 and 1962, that I was a cadet in the first two-year session. It, my, brigade, my brigade had the great honor of being selected to come and conduct spring campaigns in the Clearwater Corps. Nothing like this, nothing like the other, a small, small building. But the good news was they were dedicating the new building, Fort Harrison Building. I think that's been a few years past. And we started in the old building and then we came to Fort Harrison for the new. Of course, you get assignments and my assignment was to be the morning speaker in the new Corps. The Corps, before we came, Major Fred Smith had said to them, we need to do prayer partnerships. And so the people of the Corps selected the cadets and we had names given to us of the Corps members. And this was long before the campaign began, but it was the beginning of God's great working in each of us and in the lives of the Corps. That morning as we started the Sunday morning meeting, the presence of God was there. And I also have a gravelly throat, I'm sorry. <laughs> but the presence of God was um, so close to us. And I felt him working within me as well um, as we finished the meeting and the altar call was given. The, the altar was lined with those who came. After the meeting, we shared together about what had taken place that day. And um, we were blessed and we prayed. And someone said to the group, well, one of the ladies who knelt was in the Cone family. Some people knew her. We had cadets from Florida. I didn't know the Cone family at that time, but I was glad that she was there and had made her commitment to the Lord at that time. It was the first contact that I came in contact with uh, Alice's family. Four plus years later, I had received orders to go to the THQ staff department under the leadership of none other than Commissioner, excuse me, Colonel Carl Cohn as the department head. He was a joy to serve under. He was creative, he had knowledge that was great, and, and he was also in the process of beginning the way we have our THQ staff now, uh, personnel, program, 
and business. And I did secretarial work, but he often would call me in and I would read the personnel minutes. That's why I lost my eyesight all those years ago. And then he put everything to work. It's still in the works today, I understand. It may not be tomorrow, but for now, we still have what he put in to being in those days. He was very creative, and Alice, his daughter, has those attributes as well as we work together. His faith in all that he did was quite evident. And Alice also shared that faith. She happened to be engaged to a young man who was an officer by the name of William Speck. It just so happens that I also was engaged to a cadet by the name of Philip Swires. And her father began to work through the system because those days long ago you had to wait one whole year after you were commissioned before you could marry. Well, Bill, I believe you got married in December of 1968, and Phil was fortunate enough to marry me <laughs> in December of 1968. And this past December, we celebrated our 50th anniversary, isn't God good? Due to the efforts of her father, many things for good happened. And Alice was among that. Um, I met the boys, Richard and Norman, but I never met um, the sisters in those days. But finally, in 2000, we were fortunate enough to be stationed in the Central Territory with the Hensons as our leaders. And Bill and Alice were on the staff in the cabinet and we joined them. We loved being a part of that staff. The kindness and the commitment and the joy of those days is more than I could say. We worked together, particularly in the women's department, but we also had great ministry together as we traveled. And being new to the territory and living rather close together, they would say to us, would you like for us to pick you up and take you? Thank you, Bill. We will always be thankful for the kindness that you showed us during that time. We worked hard and we played. And Alice had a special china shop, a gift shop to my liking. And there were often times when we would finish with our work that she would say, would you like to go? Seems that we enjoyed a lot of the same things. And then she would invite us to her home. If you know Alice, you know that she loved her birds. There would be times when we would go in the door and she would go to the cage to check and the bird was somewhere else. Don't know how it got out. But I know that she cared enough about it that she searched for those birds until they were safely found. Bible, Bible uh, messages were shared and the ministry was great. Alice lived out the instruction in Philippians 4, 4 and 5, which tells us to rejoice in the Lord always and to let your gentleness be known to everyone, to her children. That was your mom. She was genuine in all of her actions. She was generous in so many ways, particularly with her time and with her talents. And she was good. Her goodness was wrapped up in a joyful spirit. She was wise. She was smart. She was thoughtful. And she committed all of this to God and to his works 
and to people like Phil and me. I trust that those of you who are kin to her share those same uh, attributes. She was genuine. I never heard her speak unkindly to anyone or about anyone. And you know the really important thing is, I have never, after all these years, heard anyone say anything unkindly about her. She made an impression to each of us. She was a dedicated, beautiful officer who took her ministry that God called her to for real. And she worked hard. And she laughed. And she enjoyed people around her. I've been thinking of her quite often these days. And I was sitting at the desk the other day and all of a sudden, you know the song, Finally Home. I hope I can get through this. I thought, Alice, my friend, you are finally home. Just think of stepping on shore and finding it heaven, of touching a hand and finding it God's, of breathing new air and finding it celestial, of waking up in glory and finding it home. Alice, we love you and you are finally home in the hands of God.